Oh, right, all right, all right. Let's go, guys. We got Serral in the top left side here, up against Maru in the bottom right. Maru going for a low ground barracks into gas. Serral has gone for a 15 hatchery into an overlord and now a 15 spawning pool. Going to be interested to see these top dogs going at it. Babylon is a pretty small map, but one which I know Rainer actually really enjoys. It'll be interesting to see how Serral fares here against Maru. It feels like the map gets a bit crowded, but. There's one big advantage for Zerg on this map, and that is the Terran can secure four bases very well, have a nice central position with a third and a fourth, or vice versa. Their fifth is always very exposed, either out here or up in the top right corner. So that's something we're going to have to keep our eyes on. This is from the group stage of, of course, Masters Coliseum 6, guys. A fantastic Chinese tournament going over these next few couple of weeks. You'll be seeing me casting a lot of the best games from it. Not all of the games. Because it's six-man round-robin group stages where everybody plays everyone else in the group stage to see who progresses. I believe the top three players from each six-man group progress to the final playoff bracket. Double Marine opening. Maru is looking for the Overlord. So a lot of time the Overlord will come in here at this point and then you run forward to the Marine, float the barracks if it tries to hide on the pillar and you can kill it over here. Unfortunately for him, Serral is very safe against this. And that's because Maru does this build so often on this map. So often, Maru does a low ground barracks with a couple of marines here and goes hunting for overlords. So Serral's just like, I'm just going to leave an overlord at home, watching for proxy barracks marines, one on the other side of the map, but in a position you'll never find it. So Serral might be a little blind, but he's also playing exceptionally safe, and that's going to put him in good stead. He's got a couple zerglings going across to have a little bit of a scout. They will find a reactor building on a barracks. If they get inside the main, that would be great, because there's a second factory, oh, sorry, a factory and a second barracks. That's a very interesting build for Maru. So it looks like he's going for a 2-1-1, but like maybe with a few Hellions first? Actually, this doesn't make any sense. What's he going to do? Build I guess he builds a tech lab on the factory and then just swaps the barracks onto it. And then Marines do come in. They do see the barracks with the reactor. And yeah, he is building a tech lab there and a starport. What? Okay, Maru's build is bananas. I mean, this is one of those builds which, which uh, you know... Is, it's what makes him very unpredictable and hard to read. I think that the scary thing about Maru is if, if players did his openings and they weren't so good at macro, you wouldn't be so afraid. It's because you just don't want to lose track of what he's doing in the game. But yeah, it's either a Raven or more likely a Banshee here, but while also going towards a somewhat delayed stem. Meanwhile, Roach Warren and Second Gas is on the way for Serral. Serral's going to play very, very much just a... <clears throat> excuse me, a low economy style. Uh, sorry, not low economy, but low gas style. Skipping link speed straight into roaches. I really love rushing Lurker Viper off of the roaches into the mid game, but I know Serral is much more of a fan of just basically getting a very quick hive. If he can get gases up on a fourth base, either here or down here, he'll go eight gas and he'll basically just try to get out a big Lurker timing as quickly as possible. He might even go double Lurker then to do that. Of course, that's many minutes down the track. I don't expect Serral to commit to a 1-1 Roach timing, but that also has found a lot of success against Maru in the past. Okay, we got a Banshee on the way there with Cloak Stim coming in. Factory's going to build a reactor, which I believe is just setting up so these two can swap around in a little bit after you build the second Banshee. Swap the starport onto the reactor, factory onto the tech lab, and then you've got tanks and medevacs to follow up. That second Banshee didn't start yet, so a slight mistake, I believe, for Maru. He keeps not having enough money. He's focusing on his Marines and SCVs. I honestly don't think he realizes, because I saw him select the Starport once or twice, and I don't think he realizes that that second Banshee didn't build. I don't know. Could be wrong. Single Engineering Bay on the way so far. No sign of a third Command Center. The Banshee does not spot that Overlord. Did the Overlord spot the Banshee? There's a Spore Crawler going up in each base right now, making himself very safe. Overlord's going to fly in. And indeed, it does look like Single Banshee was the intention from Maru. Factory and the Starport are going to swap over. Overlord's going to fly through. Roach is on the front. Deflect the Marines very nicely. And three Marines have gone down. Finally, an Overlord falls. But you see no sign of a third command center. And that is very, very big. Banshee does come in and get two drones. Not too bad, but... Serral's up about 10 workers and building 10 more. He's going to be up 20 workers, pumping Roaches. Roaches very easily stuff two base all-ins, right? And that's why we're seeing the third command center from Maru, because he's like, oh man, if you're playing Roaches, can't really break you with a pack of Marines and one or two siege tanks, so I better take a third base. But this means Serral has a head start going towards this third. He's going straight to 66 workers and double Evo chamber. Serral's playing with a lot of confidence right now. 
He's getting supply blocked though. Let's build a few overlords now. Um, this is what we call a low impact supply block. Basically, because he's already got all three mineral lines and all the gases completely full, even if he was building drones right now, they wouldn't have anywhere to mine from. So yes, he's got 10 lava that could be turning into roaches right now, but it's low impact because he's not actually losing potential mining time from it. So it's, it's, it's annoying, you know, slows down his roach production, but as long as he doesn't take damage right now, he's got enough roaches and queens to defend. He shouldn't be too affected by it. Fourth base is indeed going down in the bottom left, by the way. Single banshee, you're going to push those roaches back for now. Second engineering bay is up. There we go. Armor upgrade does start. And now going up to three more barracks is Maru. His base is looking a little chaotic right now. He hasn't found any momentum whatsoever. Cheryl really is the man that just takes the wind out of your sails. I think Maru likes to be a, a sailboat racing out in the open ocean with a lot of wind under his sails and Cyril is the the guy that just kills all momentum for his opponents especially with these weird bizarre openings like you're looking to get the zerg off balance and Cyril right now i feel like maru's trying to trip him he's trying to shove him push him from weird angles and so far Cyril has just not moved an inch he is a oak with very very deep roots right now Third command center going over there. Fourth command center on the way. Whoa! Maru has said, okay, all right. You're not. You're going to refuse to get off balance? All right, we're playing late game, buddy. We're playing late game, buddy. I might not have had the smoothest start, but I'm going to start a fourth command center. I love this shift. I love this shift from Maru. That is amazing. That's so sick, dude. Okay, Marines coming forward. Roaches are there. Ooh, ow. Maru with some... That was Miss Micro, guys. <laughs> he misclicked trying to pick up those Marines into the second medevac. Units lost tab is ahead for Maru, but that is to be expected. Hive. Yeah, very quick hives on the way. Now, he's making Ling Speed, so Cyril's thinking about adding Zerglings. I guess just because they're cheap on gas, but without melee upgrades, they won't be that useful. He's got the Hydrogen on the way. We expect Lurker down. Like I said, quick Lurker timing. If he opens up pure Roach, unless you see him swap into Banely Nest and Ling Speed earlier, it's almost always going to be a quick Lurker timing for Cyril. He loves the Lurker timing. The weakness he has, I mentioned it earlier, is he does not get vipers very quickly with it. So tanks in the right position can be very effective. Second factory, though, is only on the way now. Fourth command center is up for Maru. We expect that to make into an orbital in the near future. APM for both sides, very even. Just above 400 for Serral, 425 for Maru. Marines coming in. Going to focus down a few of these creep tumors. Let's pick up those marines. Does feel like marine? the marine micro is... Not quite as crisp as it sometimes is for Maru. Obviously, playing online, both players will be playing on the US server. It's not like that's very close to Finland nor Korea. If only there was a server in Mongolia. They'd probably, probably both have better ping, assuming the routing was good, but... Blizzard's not too big on getting servers in Mongolia, don't know why. Now I'm trying to remember what the capital of Mongolia is. Is it Ulan Ulaanbaatar? Is that is that a different place? Am I am I just making up making up sounds right now? Anyways, a uh, bunch of a big big server room in a giant yurt would be amazing. Uh, fourth base up in the top right. We've got three more barracks up. Maru, I assume, is going to go tech labs in a ghost ca academy there. Three more tech labs on the way. Not bad. Seismic Spines coming in. Oh, it is Ulaanbaatar. I, I'm sure I'm butchering the pronunciation of that. But anyways. <laughs> Fifth base gas coming in. Serral's doing a pretty good job of setting up right now, but I, I feel like where's the timing attack? He's added Infestors, no Vipers. He's going, Mass Drop? Serral! What are you doing, you mad dog? He's going to try and Mass Lurker drop the main. Oh man, if this Bio finds those Dropper Lords though, that's going to suck for him. So he's trying to shove the top right now. Roachling Lurker there. Okay, let's see what goes on. He's going to try. He's going to find a command center. That's always a good pick off. The overlords get stimmed on. Maru takes out a bunch of those. The lurkers are trying to push this planetary. But with all the tanks and libs there, this doesn't seem like a good attack. Serral! Serral, what are we doing, mate? Oh, my God. I mean, he does take out a few SCVs, but... Oh, Serral found the strong point of Terran defense. I think he thought this will be the undefended area. He was not expecting all the tanks and libs to be right there. This would have been a better angle to push on the south. And in general, I actually think the third base is usually the better option because there's no planetary and there's usually less siege tanks there, even though they have the sensor tower. So a lot of people think, oh, sensor tower, let's not go there. 
but it's always the fourth base the Terran's a bit more worried about, so definitely a nice hold for Maru. He's now up a bit further in the resources. He lost a few workers, but he was so high he doesn't care. They're still at even workers. And remember, Maru's building more commands and he's preparing for a late game. He's building a Ghost Academy right now as well. He's adding all those little details he's going to need for a much longer game. Baneling Nest is on the way for Serral as well as melee upgrades though. So Serral is going to be gearing up himself for some future progression. Still got those infestors. They're jacked, man. 200, 200 gas on each one of those. Oh, he fungles all four. Medivac's not bad. One, two. Can he get three and four? Good focus fire there by Serral. He's got those double Hydra upgrades, double Lurker upgrades. Two, two. And Maru's going to try and do a Marine Drop counterattack while he builds that Ghost Academy. Feels like Maru is just gearing up for the late game, and I love it. We don't get to see enough late game between Maru and Serral. And I really feel that if Maru just builds that Iron Bank, keeps building command centers, plays very static, very slow, doesn't give Serral opportunities. Serral isn't on, he's not on the Broodlord Infester, and Lurker armies don't scale too well. When you get 10 plus tanks, 10 plus ghosts, it's very hard to deal with that. Maru once again fumbling a drop. This is not lag, guys. This is just Maru's having a slow hands day. Not sure if his shoulder's uh, playing up or anything. It's okay, Maru fans. I got your back. You guys don't need to make the excuses today. I'll give you I'll give you an imaginary excuse beforehand. You know? You've always got to be prepared. Several fans out there are like, oh, it's a Finnish holiday where they, uh, they feel sad about something in a war. So that's why he doesn't play well on this day because he's sad about it or something, you know? <laughs> Watching Serral and Maru play and the fanboys fight in the comments is one of my favorite things. Uh, Lurker, Infesta, Hydra coming forward. The tanks are there. Nice defense by Maru. Good counter drop as well. Oh, the Mar Marines are coming in. Marines are coming in. Good focus fire so far. Gets a few of those. Does save a few of those Marines. Good job. He's just staying very active. Mar Mar Maru's keeping Serral's economy small. And Serral still has quite a few trash units. He's got 19 roaches on this map, guys. You do not want to have 19 roaches. That's 38 supply of trash. Not to mention the Ravages, 6 supply. Just two Ravages that don't really do much anymore. More drops going across the bottom. That drop does get cleaned up. Serral should probably be trying to cover the entire map in creep spread as well, but it does feel like this game's slowing down, and from what may have been an early advantage... Now we're seeing Maru just gear on up. He's got plus two vehicle weapons on the way. He'll start plus three soon. He's got three, three bio, two more factories, extra orbital command centers, which he's using to kind of choke up the approaches on the map. This is very nice play here by Maru. Serral has the bigger bank though. It's natural with the early game going Serral's way. He's going to have a bit of a momentum advantage in that bank. Can he use it? Can he overwhelm? Nice drop path. He's going to try and snake around the back here. Banshee guarding the middle. We've got Ghost going out. Do we have a nuke? He's got a nuke! So he's got a little drop in the top being distracting. The drop going around the back. And he's got a nuke coming up the front as well. Show us what you got, Maru. Show us what you got, mate. Tries to drop on the bang ledge on the right. Ends up having to leave there. The drop on the left comes in. And has to pull away because there's Hydras on top of it. Same time, nuke does go on the bottom. Let's go to Serral's camera, guys. Serral sees it. He sees the red dot, guys. Gonna hide the drones very close to it. That's a lot of lava, unfortunately. He's got gonna lose 17 lava. But eh, it's a little bit of potential production. He's still got 56 more lava where that came from, and my game just tabbed out for absolutely no reason. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Literally just didn't press anything. I definitely didn't press Alt Tab, and I have the Windows key disabled. That's what we call the Windows 11 special. That's the second time it's happened in the last two months. Okay, Banshee finally goes down. Serral's creep spread leaves something to be desired, guys. I think Serral's had pretty pretty decent control overall, but yeah, he's got to get rid of these roaches. He's going to just donate a few of those to the ghost. He doesn't want to throw everything away at once and just gives, give Maru a bunch of value, but he's got to trade. There's only three tanks over here. This is an opportunity. Serral's getting in there with his Adrenal 1-3 Zerglings. There's a few Hellbats coming in, though. Those Hellbats are very, very good. The Lurkers will siege and use their range to maybe force the command center to lift. The tanks do shell on them and make it an expensive move. In the north, the roaches are going to run back in up there, but I believe there's still liberators there. Trying to use fungal to zone out the ghosts, not quite working. And these roaches and ravages, he's going to take out a siege tank, and looks like he will manage to get a second one. Oh, he actually gets a big fungal, and the ghost catches a few of those, but look at the snipes. So many hydras get popped on the way out there. Ooh-wee. Okay, the roaches are trying to snipe down what they can here. They're going to try and focus down as many of these units. This is a very tough scenario right now. 
The roaches stuck behind the mineral line. Six SCVs is all that went down economically. I feel like I would be afraid as Serral. Serral often says, you know, late game, it is actually very hard. He, he, he doesn't feel that comfortable in it. Even though he looks god tier, he'll always say very humble answers when you ask him about it. On the other hand, Maru doesn't have that many orbitals. He's only got five orbitals. He has not built the Iron Bank. He's building it now. He's like adding these commands and it's slowly. They're just not coming in as quickly as I'd like. And he's already at five factories, eight barracks, a starport. He's getting blue flame and plus three vehicle weapons. Like he's got great production, but Maru is a little slow on getting the command center count up. And now the Broodlord transition comes and that's where Serral's going to say, yeah, I'm happy to play you in the late game. Unfortunately for him, he's only got one infester. That's a mistake. You need more than one infester. The Marauders find the infester, take it out. If you don't have infestors, the ghosts are going to cause you problems. 17 ghosts and no answer to it other than banelings. So it's Broodlord, Hydraline, Bane, a couple of lurkers left over from the early stage, a few vipers as well. Catches a few SCVs, but Maru does snag a lurker before backing away from the middle of the map. There's also a good Viking count out, and this is something a lot of players don't do against Broodlords. Serral's always said the answer to Broodlords is to have enough Vikings to actually punish them, but oh, Snipe's coming in! The vipers all get popped as well as one of the Broodlords! Where's the Overseer, mate? Oh my gosh, he has six Overseers. They just went there. Another Broodlord gets popped. Maru is a little far out, though. Oh gosh, does lose one of those ghosts. Two of those ghosts go down. Units lost to have 6,000 resources in the favor of him, though. He got two Broodlords and two Vipers in that trade, which is very, very nice. Broodlord's going to start to chase. He's going for it. Oh, Serral's YOLOing. Banelings roll through the Hellbats. The Ghosts do evade most of those Banelings, but they are getting pushed back by it. The Hydras take out most of the Vikings. The Broodlords have to fall back now. The Viking Ghost coming in for the chase. They're going to try and punish these Broodlords on the retreat. Broodlord goes down. Another Broodlord getting sniped. Nice transfuses for Serral. Saves a few Broodlords. Lands a volley and does push those Ghosts back, guys. Oof. Okay, guys. Units lost to have 5,000 resources. No one's been able to mine the forward bases yet as well. I always complain about, you know, players not trying to mine those forward bases. I don't know if Serral really had enough map dominance to do it earlier. He probably did at some point, but it's it's past the point where he can just easily take those front bases. And now Maru's getting a middle base at the same time you are. Serral's still not even fully transferring drones to it, which is definitely a mistake. And a Liberator's denying it. Maru's so far looking like he's going to mine equal resources on this map to Serral and is going to trade better. That tells you he's winning this game. Serral doesn't want to let that happen. Bailing's rolling forward right now. Ghost on the right side getting overrun. The tanks and the Liberators will get taken out, but oh, the Bailing's mostly get shot down. Good spready on the Ghost, but all the tank Lib goes down. Is that worth it for Serral? He's pretty similar units lost. It was about 6,000. It's still about 6,000 resources lost. I think that was a very good position. If he can now use this to get rid of the planetary, it's absolutely worth it. He's building seven infestors right now, which I do feel is the thing he's been lacking. Having a few infestors looking to fungal those ghosts is what can hold him back. Planetary is taking big damage. Luckily for Maru, he got building armor. So it has five building armor right now. Remember these broodlings only do seven damage. So they're doing two damage in attack. It's going to take, of course, 750 broodling strikes. Not counting the actual Broodling Strike damage, but the Broodling Bites, I guess, to kill that planetary. Nice zoning newt to push Serral back. Serral falls back now. A few Thors in the mix. They do outrange the Broodlords. He's on four Thors with three more building. But you need tanks to cover from the Infestors and your Parasite. And there's not that many tanks. The Broodlords grab one. Look at the way Serral's splitting his Infestors. He's looking for the Fungal. He does cop a big EMP. And that tank lands a big shot. The Infestors taking big damage. Blinding Cloud does land. Serral's going to clear the front row with Blinding Cloud. Nice Blinding Clouds, but the Ghosts, they're getting away from the Banelings. The Hydra Broodlord look like it will be able to take out the Thors, potentially. A few of the Thors do go down. Checking in on the Units Lost tab, it's 7,000 resources. So that one was slightly positive by 1,000 resources for Maru. But I'd be expecting him to be trading way better than that. This is actually pretty close, but as the chase happens, oh, the chase does make it a few thousand resources more efficient, up to 8,000. The chase is so good, but Serral says, did you chase too far? Lands a fungal. Hydraling Bane dives on top, takes out a bunch of these Terran units, both sides taking turns, overextending just a little bit here. The Thor's getting pushed back there as well, and this top base may have been isolated. He's going to go for it. There's not that many Banelings, but if he can blow up their repairing SCVs, that's all he needs. That's all he needs. The Ghosts come in for the snipe from behind. The Lings get the surround, and he barely gets it. Serral. It's just a tiny moment 
where Maru loses map control, Maru counterattacked too far on Kreef, and that threw away this planetary fortress. That was a huge mistake for Maru that gets punished. Maru right now is also trying to take the bottom base. He should not do that. That is way too exposed. Maru needs to double down on this base and try to remove several top base. If he can do that, he will win this game. But he was at such a good spot having that base. Now he loses control of it. Whilst he has Remax, Serral still has a little bit more bank in the uh, money in the bank. Now, the Broodlord count is down to just three. So his Broodlords are basically gone. It's back to Hydra, Ling, Bane, Viper. It's 13 Hydras, 67 Zerglings, 37 Banelings, two Vipers, eight Infestors. It's all about Spellcasters giving some value to this basic army for Zerg, and he's going to go for it. Blinding Cloud across all the Thors and Tanks. The Banelings try to roll forward. Oh, but that angle, the way Maru just spreads into this giant arc. And as the Zerg chase, they find themselves encircled by the Terran. Yet despite that, the opening spells were so good. Look at that, 6,000 resources lost. Serral's dragging it back in his way again. They've maintained pretty much dead even trading for the last 10 minutes of this game. That's very good for Serral. That being said, Maru's got this middle base up again. Trading even might not be enough if you let Maru mine that middle base out. Oh, he's going to take out these front units pretty well. Maru may have overextended, may have pushed forward a bit too far, maybe chucking a bit of a clem there, not able to keep it in his pants. Maru's going to have to holster that bad boy and be a little bit more patient. He needs to look for the correct engagements. I like that the Broodlords realize they weren't useful anymore, so they've gone to harass the bottom side, just trying to distract Maru here. I mean, these should be free kills if a single four goes after them or something like that, but Maru's so focused on the top right now. He's down to just five siege tanks. Doesn't have too many Hellbats either. Actually, he's got eight Hellbats, but only three up here. I guess the new ones are rallying across. Hellbats clean up the Zerglings. Tanks clean up the Hydras and the Banes. Ghosts help against everything. Thors help against Broodlord swaps. But there are no Broodlords right now. Looks like a Liberator flew in and died. Massling run by comes in the production. Gets a Hellbat. Few SCVs and Marauders going down. Broodlords are now sieging the main base. These Ling's actually doing pretty well, forcing that third to evacuate. Ghosts do come back. Nice pack of Ghosts will deal with all of this. Look at that on the top side. The orbital is in a bit of threat. I like the way Serral's poking in, though. Maru's supply is dangerously low. These last few fights, incredible for Serral. And look at this. He's still got these Broodlords alive. Now just chipping at the production. This is going to add a bit of stress to Maru. Just an extra thing for him to think about and worry about. Does he send the ghosts up to deal with it? Does he just go back to the front? Looks like he's just focusing on the front. He realizes that's where the fight lies. Massive blinding clouds, but Serral's attacking around a bit of a corner. I don't know if this is the right angle for Serral to be taking. He clears the Hellbats, but then he has to fall back. That was a good hold for Maru. Maru hanging on to this top base. He needs this top base. It's his lifeline. Serral has transferred to the bottom. He's stealing the resources on one of Maru's bases right now. I wish he transferred a few more workers there, but nonetheless, even just 10 workers mining there is great because Serral's going to lose his important base in the top left. That is a problem. Barrack's starting to fall in the main base. The first one does lift. It's amazing that he hasn't actually lost them. A single Liberator could deal with those Broodlords, but it'll take about five minutes to do so. Maru says, whatever. At least it'll get rid of them eventually. Ling's coming in on the backstab again. Serral constantly trying to just go around the edges, look for little flanking maneuvers, little ways to get in behind your opponent's front, front line. Uh-oh. He had to pull his whole army south. Maru's abandoning the top. After denying these bases, he said, give up here, rotate to the bottom. This may be a genius idea. If he can remove these two bases of Serral, he gets rid of the Broodlords and takes two new bases for himself, and he's just denied Serral bases up top. This might actually be very smart. 10,000 resources lost in the unit's difference. Uh, Serral replacing the Viper that he lost. He's still mostly on a Hydra Lingbane Viper army. Income-wise, Serral is way ahead right now. Losing that base mining, he's going to take a while to re-establish one. Mara's trying to re-land one here. That's not a good idea. Oh, man. Having to wait for this creep to clear. Where's the command center? It's going to float down. Maru gave up the top base, but for what? He doesn't have a command center here. Okay, he's floating one down. It will get there. He needs to blanket that thing in mules as soon as he gets it. But keep in mind, Maru did not build the Iron Bank. I've been talking about how Maru doesn't build the Iron Bank anymore. He used to build 10, 11 orbitals. He's only got seven. This deep, 25 minutes in the game, only seven. He doesn't have nearly as many mules as he would have if he built the Iron Bank. By the way, that's right. There's a little burrowed infester hiding behind that base, ready to either double fungal the SCVs and mules or catch some ghosts on the retreat. Serral does lose another hatchery on the south, though. Man, Serral's going to run out of resources. Serral has so much more mining, but for how long? This base is, is almost out. That base is getting low. This base is okay for now, but this, these, these middle bases are almost impossible for him to hold on to. I feel like Serral needs to keep finding ways in to do damage to Maru, and as Maru gets close to maxing out again, he's adding a Raven as well, which could rally over and catch that Infester. 
The resources are running dry on the map, and it's always Terran who can mine much faster off one base than you. So I really worry for Serral the longer this game goes. I think he needs to get a very decisive engagement in the next few minutes. 30 minutes is pretty much the hard cutoff. Oh, he's got a squad of cloaked ghosts that were looking around for that army. That's why he's scanning. He's looking to run in and snipe those infestors. But he's a bit worried. Where are Serral's overseers, guys? He has a few overseers. He's bringing them up to his army now. Momentary lapse. Man, that double fungal just looks so juicy. You could catch about 20 SCVs with two fungals. I would take it. Even though killing SCVs is not important at all, I would not be able to resist. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comments. Would you manage to hold it back for no 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 fungal November? Or would you just let it fly? I'd let it fly. If I see that, I would not be able to contain myself. It's just, uh, just blop that fungal right on top. Too juicy for me to resist. I'm assuming most answers are just let it fry. There's like one person who's like, I'd, I'd hold it back, or at least I'd try. <laughs> Hatchery gets killed, no cancel there. That's another 300 minerals down the drain. Serral can't be affording that. Serral just built mass spore crawler, guys. I don't know if... Okay, I don't think he was trying to go over supply, but he definitely can't now because he lost some units anyway. If you time out building spore crawlers with also building a bunch of units and then cancel the spores, uh, you can obviously go over 200 supply. We don't see it very often anymore. You need a lot of money in the bank to make it worthwhile. Empty dropper lord threatening in here. Broodlord sieging that top base. Top base doesn't have that many resources left. Man, these Broodlords are pretty far out on their own, though. What's Serral up to? He's going to try and run in the bottom with some lings. There's no planetary left. Oh my god, no, no planetary yet, I should say. The SCVs in the planetary massively exposed. I think Maru should probably give up the top right. I think he should probably give up the top right. He's trying to fight on two extreme flanks, and it's giving Serral opportunities. He's giving Serral massive opportunities. These lings could get in that base and ruin him right now. Even if he denies this base on the top, I am worried for Maru right now. Uh, because he's taking a lot of damage. His command center goes down in the bottom. The planetary, like, finishes just as it dies to the Zerglings. The row of spores is getting clean. Maru still has a killer army, though. As good as this is for the economic follow-through for Serral, um, I, I actually wonder kind of what else is going to go on. Man, this base is just completely undefended. What is Maru doing? You can't leave your only economy undefended on the bottom like this, but he is. Maru takes out a base in the top, which is nice. But I think maintaining these two bases absolutely trumps denying Serral's bases right now. I do feel Terran sometimes spread themselves too thin, and you've really got to focus on containing the position, because Zerg is always going to have more mobility than you, even at this late game stage when they're mostly spellcasters and broodlords. They've still got those Ling run buys, and as Maru just give up this top right base, it's almost mined out, and focus on taking these two bases, completely mining them out, maybe nuke or harass the top base. But yeah, to, to lose that planetary, this is another moment where I think Maru's made a bit of a positional error. Um, and given Serral an opportunity, he probably shouldn't have had. I mean, Serral's playing well, don't get me wrong. He's, he's taking every opportunity that's offered to him very, very nicely. I just feel like he's uh, he's kind of up against the wall in terms of resources. Serral's income is dipping terribly. It's lower than Maru's right now. And that's with Maru losing the base. If Maru had the other base up, he'd be weird. Let's take out a tank there, a few SCVs. What's Maru going to replace it with? Let's see Maru's comp. He's on three Thors. He doesn't have any Vikings. I think that's a bit of a mistake. Yes, they're weak to spellcasters, but their ability to, to shoot down the Broodlords from range is so good. So he's going to go up to fifth Thor, two Ravens. 16 Hellbats is also probably too many. His army's very low quality. His tanks also aren't supporting his army out right now. Maru's going to lose his army down here. He's going to get separated. A lot of his Hellbats and Marauders separated from the pack. I'm surprised he didn't pick them up and try to save them. Maru flies his Medivacs through the enemy army. What's he... What? And all these Hellbats are going there. Okay, he's building more Thors and Vikings. He wasn't even maxed. Maru... Uh, having a little bit of an aneurysm at this stage in the game. I don't know what he's doing, mate. That was a very... I, 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 he could have split just a few Hellbats to kill this base. It was a worthless base as well. He just lost a huge chunk of army there. Then flew his medevacs away. He's now rebuilding the medevacs because, of course, he needs them for his ghosts. Now he's down 30 army supplies. Serral's going to take this opportunity. Serral's going to take this opportunity. Uh, he needs more Thors. Maru's got money right now. He's not spending it. Maru's running forward with ghosts on the south. He's going to get big snipes. The Broodlords are getting popped. But, oh, my God, the fungal of the gods lands from the north. The transfusers from the queen's landing on the Broodlords as well. He gets a few Broodlords, but look at all those ghost corpses sinking into the ground. And Maru, I think maybe he had to give this base up. I think he's got to give this base up now for sure. He's got to pull back, give it up, and try to rebuild. But I guess he doesn't have enough resources on this other base to the right to remax now. 
Maru there at the end of a 30 minute game seems like he's feeling the pressure and just feeling the heat the blinding cloud comes down the neural going down on the Thors the Banelings are going to roll in Serral looking fantastic stealing those Thors turning them against their own side is always so brutal he's even got a medevac healing his Banelings right now that is absolutely bizarre to see but look at that the Broodlords may have mostly fallen but he's denied this base he's got this one mining this one mining and, uh, of course, Maru's down to his last few mineral patches. By the way, pervy boy Infester got forgotten about. Serral forgot he's there. Would have been great to see him come into play at some point. Nice snipe there on one of those Broodlords. Maru did make a big doo-doo. And, you know, the thing is, it wasn't just one big mistake. I'm sure, like, oh, I can't believe it. He must have had his cat jump on his keyboard. But why did he give this base up earlier? Why did he give this base up earlier? Maru has been, I think, just making the worst decision. Serral's been very good at attacking him on multiple sides. And trying to expand more bases and maru is the one who i think has just made a few worse decisions with which bases to knuckle down on defending and which he kept abandoning prime bases at very important times to go somewhere else and Serral punished him for it every time maru made a mistake Serral instantly punished him for it scan goes down maru's like hmm there could be an infester watching me i don't have a turret here so he scans he sees that pervy boy after all that time watching from the shadows finally does go to prison for it Sarah's going to try and take the top right. Uh, not worth it, in my opinion. Better to just long distance minor base like that, but whatevs. At least he's removing the minerals from Maru's side, so that is something. All right, Maru is now down 40 army supply. It's just a big Hydraling Bane spellcaster army, so it's not the most technical army. Tanks do very well versus this if you can EMP the Vipers. Manson is in the middle getting forced to lift there by the uh, Zergling Harass. Six more Broodlords are making to help break this line. I like the way Serral's using a mixed army very well. A lot of players derp out on that mixed army. They go all Hydraling Bane, I move, Hydraling Bane A move or they go all Broodlord Infester very static. He's going for a mix of the two. So far he's done it very, very well. Now Serral only has had plus one armor on his Broodlords this whole time, which does affect them, but... Because Thors do such high single impact fire, it's not actually the most important thing. You can see they do uh, 47 damage a shot, so knocking one or two off that doesn't really matter. Broodlord's coming in right now, trying to break the tank line. Looking for the fungals. Gotta be careful of those snipes, though. Oh, the tank focus fire on the infestors was good, but likewise, Serral counters it with transfuse. Serral, you're such a naughty boy, mate. You're not meant to be that good. You're not meant to transfuse infestors to save them from siege tank fire. Serral says, uh, of course you are. That's literally how you're meant to play the game. But uh, no, no one's meant to play the game that well, mate. You, you, you stop. These are illegal moves. Maru, of course, with a bit of a resource imbalance, finds himself on mass hellbat, which I'll tell you what, not very good against Banelings. If they get in the middle of them, they will blast them apart. I'd love to see Maru spread the hellbats out a little bit more as clumping them up does give them a big target for a fungal baneling combo. Siege Tank's moving forward. Serral's biding his time. He's just looking to deny this base, and Maru's like, I will long distance mine these last minerals. Please. Maru should have used more nukes this game. Uh, I know he built at least one. I think that was it, though. Maru has lost 98 SCVs. Serral's only lost 34 drones this game. Oh, Serral's getting ready for it. He does try to spread before going in. The blinding clouds are exceptional on the front line. Gets another one on the tank in the rear. Mass Hydra coming in with those Broodlords. Breaks that front line. And he does pull back. Very technical. He doesn't just chase. So many Zergs chase into these fights. Serral takes the front bit of the fight. The moment it starts looking like it's going to turn bad, he just runs backwards. Disengages. Super chilled out. Serral is an absolute monster. He's still got that massive income advantage. Of course, he's had that for a while. You can see the income graph here. That top base is going to mine out. Still a bit of gas for him to suck up there if he chooses to. But he's got a 55 army supply advantage, and that is very hard to deal with. A few tanks, a few ghosts, a few Hellbats, and one Thor. He may have the 250mm Punisher cannon, but the other Broodlords, they are in many numbers. Fungal on the mules! Fungal Broodlords! He's like, how dare you steal this? Both players are mining resources from the same base. That's how you know you've hit peak StarCraft, guys. Every mineral matters in this game. They're both trying to mine this long distance for Serral. Maru's command center has to get lifted. He's going to be long distance mining as well. It's a battle for control of these last resources on the map. And oh my gosh! Barely lifts the orbital in time. Yeah, you can't really land that orbital there. Those Broodlords are just going in and throwing volley after volley. The units lost type still 8,000 resources. More efficient for Maru. 
that's not very good for this matchup. Normally Terran is way more efficient. And oh, the Broodlord's coming in. Blinding Cloud spreading across. Banelings rolling through most of their Hellbats. The Ghosts trying to pull to the right side. The Infestors have been MP'd. The Hydra's all kind of stuck behind a Queen. And Serral says, yeah, the fight's starting to get a little awkward. Let's pull back. Broodlord will snipe one of those Broodlords on the way out. Sorry, the Ghost snipes the Broodlord. Two, two Broodlords do go down in the retreat there. But still at double the army supply. 100 versus 43. And now Maru's out of money. Completely. He's got no money left. All he can do is repair his Thor. These are his last resources as all of his Thors, they get their drills. The harem of SCVs all drill Big Daddy Thor at the same time. He says thank you, but uh, it's going to be his last thank you because it's going to be one last battle now. Serral's going to go in. Hydras, Lings, Banes probably can do it again on their own. With four Broodlords and a bunch of Spellcasters, it's a near impossible. It's an impossibility for Maru. There there's just no way. He's down 60 army supply. There is no way. The ghosts are low on energy. A few snipes go down. But look at that. Abducting the ghosts into the army. There's nothing that shoots up anymore. There's that one Thor on the right. But look at that. Abducts going down. Every single unit getting picked off. And Serral takes out Maru there. Maru with a few questionable decisions. But I think when you're facing the pressure of Serral and how patient he is. And how he just takes the momentum away from you. He piles that on top and does take game one. Fantastic game from Serral. GG, well played. All right, guys, going into game two. Serral up a game, and it looks like he's going to go for the famous 15 hatch 15 pool. Eric, I hope you're proud. Serral has used this build so much recently and to such great effect. And I think it's added so much variety because he can do so many different things off this opening. So, man, I hope Eric's proud of what he's done because what a great opening he's popularized. Uh, Maru going to go for the low ground. It, probably a two barracks Reaper wall off. Now, this is always an interesting matchup because I remember at first thinking 15 hatch, 15 pool was really bad versus a two racks Reaper opening. And we'll find out in a moment if that SCV goes to the natural. Is it two racks or are we just doing one racks? I think he's sending that a little late. That's not going to get there in time. Maru sloppy on his build order, guys. Look at this. He's at 150 minerals. One, two, three seconds late on the barracks. Ooh uncharacteristically sloppy come on maru wake up you're playing serral you can't come into this series lazy now don't get me wrong these guys are favorites to win the group it's unlikely that either of them doesn't make it but this guy's like gumio who could definitely be either of these players max Pax definitely could as well i'd say showtime and uh trigger are a little more underdog against them but i mean it's still a dangerous group you don't want to be just giving away a series here to serral in this group stage, you've got to play your A game. And I, I don't think Maru's the type to ever just be like, oh, I'll just throw the series versus Serral or not try that hard and then beat the other guys. Not a very smart way to play StarCraft. But uh, anyways, it is going to be 2 racks Reaper. Now, what's interesting in this scenario is with a 15 hatch 15 pool, you don't need a quick third base. You just drone your two bases up with these two very fast queens. You also don't need to build early Zerglings because the queens pop out so early. And you're going to have all this extra lava. Your hatchery is already finished 10 seconds earlier than it normally does, which is an extra drone uh, out of the lava. The injects will be 11 seconds or 12 seconds earlier. He's building an overlord on time on 26. Now, interestingly, he is mining gas already, Acerol. So it looks to me like he's kind of thinking about going ling speed or something like that. But Reaper's going to come in. He's got to buy a bit of time. Six seconds till the queen pops out. Good micro so far for Serral. Oh, he's messed it up. He's messed it up. There we go. Gets the spore crawler down at the last second. Never mind. Drone gets a nibble off on the Reaper. Nicely done. Double spore cancel. Goes back to mining. And the third queen and fourth queen start up immediately. Does start another overlord. Two more drones. And those Reapers being spotted by these overlords. So good vision here by Serral. He's also spotted the command center behind it. And we can see factory before third command center so he's gone factory second gas and i imagine that third command center will go down right now there we go very good build for maru three reapers going to rotate towards the main there's plenty of queens ready to defend that serral's already gone immediately double inject again he is very much focusing on having a crazy amount of lava this is an optimized build guys he's not making ling speed right now so he's decided not to make ling speed to just drone these two bases and go for a very quick lair what is this? Is this like Reaper's two base muta build off this? This looks a lot like Reaper's two base muta build. He starts Ling Speed up next. That'll be awesome. It's going second gas, third gas, and Roach Warren. Okay, so he's going to do a three gas Roach Warren build on two base. Now you might think, but the third's so late, pig. Isn't this so bad, guys? Look at the worker count. 
Maru has delayed his expansion from a normal expansion, whereas Serral has gotten his earlier than normal, and he fully saturated this like 20 seconds ago at about 3 minutes 10. He did this so early. He's getting so much more mining than Maru in the start of this game, and he's going to go up for that probably Roach speed, which is very scary itself as a timing attack, let alone he can also just get a third base, and he's actually going to go for the Rich Cast base. Okay, interesting. Rich Cast base at the front, a little risky, but it looks like one of the Reapers did get caught by those Queens, so... Well done by Serral so far. If they jump in, they will be on a one-way trip, so he decides to turn around. Now, Maru is building a few Marines. He's going to go... Oh, he's doing a Widow Mine drop. Okay, very cute opening by Maru here. So he's going to go for a Widow Mine drop, 3cc. He's got the double barracks making stem Marines. So he's trying to catch up on economy. And he's now seeing the purple gas base, though. He doesn't want to let that happen, so he's actually bringing seven Marines across the map. Two Reapers, seven Marines. It's a dangerous move, though. Roaches are on the way. Roach speed's on the way. This could get the cancel, but Maru doesn't realize he's up against a very, very committed Roach speed play. There's no drones long-distance mining here. This should be a little bit of a tell for Maru, but it's such an unfamiliar circumstance. I doubt he's got experience in this exact position. The Roaches are here. Maru better get out of there. He better get out of here. He's going to go for the cancel. He's committing. He needs that kill. If he doesn't get that cancel, he's going to be in big problems. Ah, down to 20 hit points. Serral cancels. I actually don't think Serral needed to cancel that. I think he could have kept it alive. Yet nonetheless, he kills seven Marines there. And that's a big expense to slow down a hatchery. Serral's still mining two bases fully at 44 drones. He just cancels it, rebuilds it. And guess what? Roach speed's almost done. He's got 12 roaches out, six more building. He could just mass roaches and shove. Because what are you doing? Widow Mine Drop's going to be on the other side of the map. That's not going to help defend. You've got a few Marines. He's got a tank up. If he starts a tank right now, Maru can be okay. Starting a tank, he might be okay. All right, he might be okay against this shove. <clears throat> if he'd broken these rocks, that would slow this down a fair bit. But look at this. Ravages morphing. Serral says, hey, you canceled my third. You've made my mind up for me. I'm going to use this amazing two-base setup that I've got to do something aggressive. Ooh, Queen's going to tank some Widow Mine shots. Only loses one drone so far. Roach Ravager shoving through the middle. One Reaper goes down. Maru knows what's happening. He needs a bunker. He needs a bunker right now. He's not building it. Widow Mine's trying to get on top. Serral, no! Serral! Serral! Oh, he does lose five drones to that one. But that's because he's focused on the front. He's already killed the barracks. He's taken out half of the, the barracks production, two thirds of the marine production with the first three seconds of his attack. His production in his wall. Maru, you've got to save that barracks. Maru's lost his only barracks. He has no production. All he can build is one siege tank at a time. And he's contaminated as well. He's not even able to build siege tanks right now. Serral literally just took a dump on his factory and said, guess what? You have zero production. I could take all the time I want because these units you have out is the only units you have out. Dude, that overseer. I don't know. He's got another one. He contaminates it a second time. Serral had this plan from the start. He actually, I didn't even catch that he morphed those two overseers. He must have morphed those a minute ahead in advance so they had enough energy. That is such a clever move. Maru's trying to wall off with engineering base to keep himself alive, but Serral's just got the numbers. He breaks the wall. He shoves on top. And what a brilliant build from Serral. GG, well played. Oh my god, so guys, check this out. This is the 420 double overseer build. So he literally morphs two overseers at like 4 minutes 10. So his lair finishes. Look at this, his lair finishes. Watch on Serral's camera. He's like, okay, lair's done. Start roach speed. Start overseer. And then he's going to make another... So he makes these two overseers immediately so they can get the energy ready. Dude, that is so cool. That is so awesome. And the thing is, if this base doesn't get cancelled by the Marines, he can just drone this up and take the gases. And he can just threaten with the Roach Ravager, deny the third. But it's especially good because if you can contaminate their factory from building tanks, you're always going to be able to use this choke point against him. If he goes two barracks wall off, he's always going to have his production. At the very least, even if you can't kill him, you kill a depot, a reactor, a tech lab, and you force his barracks to lift off and pull back. Dude, what a brilliant build order from Serral. This was just an amazing build order, and it's by no means all in, but it's perfect to counter him. And the fact that he threw these Marines away to kill the hatchery just played into it and made it even stronger. That is an amazing build, man. So, so sick. GG's.